Hey everyone, in this video, I will be talking about some of the best practices which we should try to follow when we are programming in the C-sharp language. This applies to both when we are either working as a solo developer or when we are working in a team environment. So I have a number of best practices which I want to talk about but before I do that, I want to say that this is going to be a series of videos rather than a full-fledged video because it is not really possible for me to talk about all of the best practices and not have the video pretty long. So for this reason I have decided to keep the videos short so that they are easier to watch and understand. Alright so now let's move on to the best practices which I will be talking about for this video. The first one is child class fields should not hide parent class fields. And to explain this I am going to show you a code example. Over here there are two classes, first one is the person class and second one is the employee class. Now the employee class is inheriting the functionality of the person class and the person class basically contains two properties the first name and last name and then there is a constructor which is accepting the values of this public properties and then there is a method which is get full name which is essentially returning the full name by concatenating the first name and last name now employee 2 has the same get full name method but with the same signature so the compiler is throwing a warning that this get full name is hiding the get full name method of the person class or of the parent class now this is not advisable because often the parent class field makes more sense in a broader context than to create a field with the same name in the child class so hiding the field or method of the parent class may have unintended consequences when we are talking about the entire project it could also be possible that the parent class field might have values which are essential for the proper functioning of other methods too the parent class field may have references at multiple places in the current project. It could be a bad idea to replace the parent class field or method because the compiler will not throw error but the underlying logic which returns the value will change entirely. So there are two possible solutions to this scenario. The first one is we add the new keyword to this method and hide the base get full name entirely. And the second one is to create the base method as a virtual and then override it in the child class. The second method has the advantage that we will be able to call the base get full name as well as the child get full name as and when we want it at our leisure. So now let's move on to the second best practice. The second one is use integer values for enumerations as and when possible. So integer values makes it possible to use the enums even when they are not accessible by the code which is using the values. The examples include but are not limited to integrating multiple systems and using the values in a different namespace or using them in a database etc. Now in this example the weekdays enumeration has integer values assigned to the named constants which makes it easier to store these weekdays in our database and then subsequently fetch the values to show them on the UI or to use them for any other business logic which we have in our project. Also when the enums have a large number of constants it becomes pretty easier to manage them when we have incrementing integer values. All we have to do is keep on adding new constants and then assign incrementing values to the new members. Passing enums in function arguments becomes easier because integer type can be used for the argument and the enum can be typecasted in function body when required. So over here you can see that this weekdays enum is being passed into this method and to use its integer value it can be typecasted into the integer type. We can also revert these types like by passing the integer value of the weekday and then subsequently converting it into the enum type. So it is pretty handy for different kinds of situations when we are working in a big project. Also passing enumeration values from server to client scripts becomes much easier when there are only numbers to deal with. Things become much more complicated when there are strings which are sent to the client scripts 
to identify individual enumeration members instead of integer values which can be assigned directly to the list items too. The third and last one for this video is frequently use regions for code which belongs to identical category. It goes without saying that regions are one of the best ways to organize code logic and it is always a good choice to group methods into regions because it makes it easier to navigate code files with hundreds of lines of programming logic. In this example, you can see that there is a large number of code lines which we have to traverse to find a single piece of code which we want to change or fix. But because there are regions, what we can do is we can collapse the regions and then let's say that our code belongs to the micro transaction functions. It means that we don't have to be concerned about these other four regions and we can simply go directly and expand this region and then find any line which we are looking for. Regions can also be used inside functions or methods to indicate specific roles and usage of an interconnected piece of code. Although the method body should not be big, but still if the method contains sequential code which can be organized into region, then by all means we should go ahead and do it. By this way, our method becomes more manageable and organized and it goes without saying that it becomes very easier to manage the method body as well when we are looking for a specific piece of code. Also always remember to write the name of the region after the end region directive as it makes it easier to know which region we are traversing when scrolling upwards. Alright guys, so this was all that this video has to offer. I will be back with more videos of this series so that you guys can learn about more such kind of best practices. If you have any questions or concerns or any suggestions, then feel free to reach out to me in the comments area. Also, if you like this video, then please don't be shy and like and comment on this video. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel too. If you want to be the first to know when new videos come out, I will see you in the next one. Till then, have a great day.